welcome everyone to um, another edition of Spotlight. Today, we're fortunate to have Suzanne Engelert, the artistic director of the Western Playhouse, as our guest. And I think she has some exciting news about the opening of the Playhouse. And I guess you're going to have some news about uh, some a few changes that are being made. That's right. So, first of all, why did you decide to open it, you know, given the, given the COVID situation? Um, it's a great question. And there are a couple of reasons. Um, the first thing we were thinking about uh, was how hard it's been to close the theater. We did some really excellent um, and exciting work online over the past year. But um, you know, this theater is so much about people being together and coming together and sharing the space and being in town. Um, so we knew we wanted, it was a priority for us to be open as soon as we could be. Um, we really started planning for reopening as soon as we shut down, which doesn't mean we scheduled the date, but we started talking about what would be the, the guidelines, the parameters, what would be the indicators that would tell us that we would be um, okay to reopen. And um, the most important thing for us in that regard was to really follow the, um, the journey of the state and to listen to the governor. And so as the, uh, as the governor and as the ACCD in Vermont, um, and as the Department of Health and the CDC started looking ahead and anticipating a summer in which we'd be starting to get back to normal, that's when we started to say, okay, we can we can start to think about reopening. Um, we're not going to reopen in our full seven show, 150 people on campus, 20,000 visitors. Um, we're gonna do it much more scaled down. We're gonna keep things small. Um, but we think we're, we're ready to start thinking about, uh, opening our doors. So that's sort of, that's the, the baseline of how we, how we got to this. Okay. Now, you know, given that the, there are, obviously there are going to be some impacts of the, uh, the COVID procedures and regulations, et cetera. Uh, uh let's, let's begin with, uh, the audience. What's that going to be like? Yeah. So the first thing is that we are looking at um, moving our shows outside. Um, we had hoped to have the uh, shows inside, but it looks like the safest and um, most comfortable way to have theater this summer is to be outside. And um, that's actually what most of our peer theaters are doing. So uh, you know, theater under the Green Mountains, um, audiences are going to continue to be socially distant. That's our current plan, and that is based on the um, guidelines from the governor. So you'll be seated with your um, your group, your pod, uh, but you'll be six feet apart from those around you. Um, we will be asking audiences to wear masks again, following the recommendations of the state. Those are the, those are the main things. A couple of other things that will be different. Um, we won't be pre-assigning seats, so you'll receive your assigned seat when you arrive. That will allow us to be um, flexible in terms of uh, you know who comes on each night. Um, we'll be um, we'll be entirely paperless this year. That's less about the contact of paper. You know, we've, we've heard that the um, virus doesn't spread on surfaces, but it's a good way of just making sure that people don't have to get too close to one another if they don't feel comfortable. You don't have to hand your ticket over. You don't have to receive the program. Um, so we'll be um, digital tickets and digital programs. Um, so those are the main those are the main things. So I think it will feel different, but the hope is that all of those very specific changes will allow everyone to um, to be comfortable and feel like they can be at ease once they're um, in their seats and they can watch the shows. Okay, now, now you're saying it's going to be outside. Precisely yeah. where is outside? Yeah, so we've got um, a tent that we're setting up on the grounds of the new theater. Um, so it's gonna be actually quite beautiful because we'll have the silos of the farm and the forest um, around us. Uh, so yeah, it'll be, it'll be at, our, um, at our location, but, uh, but under a tent. Okay, so if you have a tent, that means that you don't have to worry about a rain out. That's right. That's right. Yeah, we're not, people will be able to stay dry and <laughs> safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, what, what about staging? This uh, obviously is going to have an impact on staging. Um, yeah. 
well. So one of the first things that I had to do when I decided we were going to be reopening was think really hard about the kinds of shows that we can do and the specific shows we could do. So um, because you're exactly right, Ralph, the um, actors can't, we don't want actors to have to get too close to one another. Um, our actors, our company actually will be entirely vaccinated, um, but we still want to make sure that people feel uh, safe and like they have the choice to do what they're comfortable with. So mm -hmm. our first show at Elliot is actually a one person, it's a one person show. Um, so that saves, that solves the problem of actors having to get too close to each other. Um, we will have the young company performing in that as a, as a chorus, as a musical chorus, but they will be, you know, sort of um, on the sides of the stage or off stage or moving about the stage. So there won't be scenes. Um, the next show, Ring of Fire, is it's a it's a musical. It's our big musical for the year with a whopping six people. Um, I think you know usually our musical, our big musical, has twenty five people or something like that. Um, so because it's only six people, we'll be able to spread them out more. It's also a kind of um, Ring of Fire almost functions like a memory play. Um, I I not entirely jokingly think of it as a bit like uh, structurally like glass menagerie in that there's a little bit of a kind of reminiscence um, and that naturally gives to it a feeling of um, you know it's not about people in each other's faces it's about um, telling the stories that have happened in the past um, which automatically means that people get to be a little bit more distant um, the mountaintop our final play uh, is a two-person play so again fewer people on stage um, although we are hoping that by the fall we'll be able to have a bit more um, mano a mano <laughs> action in that play. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, and then we're also doing Susical, which um, is our young company uh, show with our BFA actors. Um, and that's also one of our bigger musicals of a whopping eight people. Um, but again, the way that story is told, um, it sort of allows naturally for um, distance among the actors. I'd like to get into the little more detail about the individual productions, but um, mm -hmm. One final thing is, uh, will you be using the Playhouse or the uh, Walker Farm at all? We hope to. I mean, this is a very recent decision, this idea of uh, moving under the tent. So we're hoping to still be able to do events and, you know, look, if we can move inside at any point, we will, um, because we love our theaters. They're they're very dear to us. Um, you know, the Playhouse has such an incredible history and is just one of the most glorious places to watch a show ever. Um, and Walker, you know, is such a special place that we just opened um, and is so perfect for intimate um, and, it, it, you know, intimate compelling shows where you're really listening. Um, so we hope to move inside as soon as we can. But at this point, you know, we, we sort of need to um, look at how things are laying out. Yeah. Thank you. Now, you, let's see, you're going to begin the, uh, the show with the, uh, the, the production called An Iliad. Now, I'm... I, I, I'm stressing the word and Iliad, not the right. Iliad. Right. Uh, now, this is going to be from July 14th through August 7th. Is mm -hmm. that correct? That's right. Yeah. Uh, what is an Iliad going to be like as opposed to the Iliad? Iliad, yeah. Um, thank you for catching that, actually. A lot of people don't realize that there is that very specific, specific moment in the title. Um, so, an Iliad. Uh, is based on the Iliad, Homer's Iliad, um, and it. I think it's a one-person play, and I think of it as a show that um, imagines Homer as if he lived today, and imagines Homer um, arriving as he would have, you know, thousands of years ago um, to tell the story, the first time. But arriving to a town, arriving around a campfire, arriving to, in our case, a tent. Um, to tell the story of amazing heroic deeds performed by your neighbor, your best friend, the kid who lives down the street. So in the way that the Iliad, um, that, that text that we now you know, hold up on high and read in college, um, in the way that when that, first, that story was first told, it was really a way of telling the news almost a way of saying this is this thing that happened and you know so and so's grandfather or great grandfather this is what he did um it has that same feeling there are moments where you know the poet and and, and Iliad talks about joe from this town in michigan and um you know and and uh your best friend who went off to war um so it's really about bringing that story of 
of war um, very close to us again. And it's, it's an incredible piece because it is the story of the Trojan War, but it could just as easily be the story of the war in Afghanistan or the Iraq War or the Korean War. It's very much about um, what it means for a community to have to send uh, their sons and daughters away to fight. It's, pretty, it's a really exceptional piece. On July 22nd through August 2nd, uh, you're going to have something called Susical. And I have to assume that that has something to do with a doctor. <laughs> yeah, it's a musical that uh, conglomerates a number of Dr. Seuss's uh, most well-known and well-loved stories. This year, rather than requiring everyone to come to the theater to see this, this piece, we're going to be going out to... Um, to the communities, um, especially communities where kids are, yeah. So you're really going to be, you're going to have a road company. We're going to have a road company, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. August 11th through September 5, you're going to be doing something called the Ring of Fire. Now, I, I assume this is about an art, this is not about an arsonist. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, this is, um, this is an incredible piece about Johnny Cash. Um, and about his music. And it's a group of six actors who are also musicians. Um, and they tell the story of Johnny Cash's life, but also of um, the America that he grew up in. So it talks about how his family um, survived that incredibly difficult moment of the Dust Bowl and, and then to create this amazing talent. It's a really, uh, it's a really interesting piece because it's almost entirely sung through. There's very little dialogue well, it sounds like it's going to be a fascinating show. Now, from September 29th through October 24th, um, I may, I, this is your concluding show, I believe. You're going to be doing the mountaintop, and I think that's something that is rather appropriate for this time of, uh, in our history. Yeah. That's, that's what right. I think it is. Yeah, that's right. Um, so the mountaintop is a play. It's about 10 years old now. So we're doing a 10 year revival of this play that uh, imagines um, a young maid who uh, brings coffee to Martin Luther King in the Lorraine Motel and who starts a conversation with him. Um, and in the course of their encounter, he comes to really understand his impact, but also really behind his struggle. Um, and so it's it's a it's a play about friendship. Uh, it's a really magical piece, and I mean that quite literally. There's magic in this play uh, that makes it really quite beautiful. Oh, it's wonderful. Now, uh, you, you, I believe you have another series you, you're calling the the celebration series that's going to be going on all summer. Right, and this will be a little bit like pop up um, at the end of June, and then on July Fourth weekend. And then throughout the summer, as you know, as we can, as the um, schedule allows, doing other events, music. We're hoping to find a way to do um, a cabaret weekend out there under the tent. So we'll be sort of peppering summer with these events as much as we can um, around the shows. What about uh, you know buying tickets and uh, getting tickets information, the box office dates, and how can people contact you and buy buy tickets, yeah. etc. Yep. Um, so the best way is to go to our website, which is westonplayhouse.org, and our subscriptions are currently on sale. So if you want to buy a ticket to two or more of the shows, you can do that by going to our website. Um, and then single tickets, so if you just want to see one of the shows, um, single tickets go on sale on June 1st. Well, I really want to thank you, uh, Susanna, for this, and uh, I really look forward to this. Uh, you know, I, I think everyone has missed last season and uh, Weston plays such a major role in our, uh, our, our lives here, not just cultural life, but uh, in, all, in all ways. And of course it is such a major cultural uh, event. Thank Wish you luck with it. Yeah. And uh, I realize, it's, I realize you, um, you're taking some gambles. Thank you. I was just saying um, we are taking some gambles, but we think it's important to do what we can so that we can all start getting outside again and living together again. Okay, well, good luck. And Thank uh, you. hopefully we'll be able to uh, advertise this a little bit for you. 
Appreciate so, it, Ralph. Thank I you. Thank you again for being our guest and take care. You I too. Guess I guess that'll be a wrap then for now. Thank you.